Hi, welcome to another video. So today I'm looking at CAN and CAN SPI. You can see I'm using Microelectronica's EasyPick Fusion version 7, but today this microcontroller is Microchip's DSPIC 33FJ. This is a 16-bit microcontroller connected to a CAN transceiver over here on the left-hand side of the board, running into 10 meters of twisted pair to Microelectronica's CAN SPI click board which is then the feeding microchips PIC 18F46K22 which is just the standard 8-bit microcontroller. So before I move the second CAN node out of the way I'll demonstrate this is the 10 meters of cable coiled up. This is Microelectronica's CAN SPI click board. You would ordinarily plug that into your development board. There's the CAN SPI click manual. So let me give you a closer look at the CAN SPI click. So this is a standalone, virtually standalone CAN system. All you need to run this is a microcontroller running SPI. I'll start with the beginning. This is the CAN high and low input. This is the CAN transceiver. This particular model is meant to run on 3.3 volts. There are 5 volt versions. And this clever device, it's Microchip's standalone CAN controller with SPI interface. This little chip runs the whole CAN protocol. All registers are enclosed. All you do, communicate via SPI, tell it what data you want to send and receive. So this CAN controller interface and this DSPIC33 both implement the CAN version 2.b protocol, which is the 29-bit identifier implemented on vehicles. If you're not going to use the system on a vehicle, you can just get away with the 11-bit identifier. I'm not going to go into too much detail. If you want more details on the CAN protocol and the signals, look at my other video. So, from my DSPIC, through the twisted pair, 10 meters, runs into this SPI click being controlled by Microchips 18F46K22. Right, so what I've done with this fusion board is implemented it as node 1. When I first turned this board on, it sent the number 1 to the second node, now 10 meters away. And the second node counts from 1 to 255. And when it's done that twice, it starts counting backwards. Now you can see it's counting up. When this first node sees a zero, it starts at the top of the screen. If you don't have a TFT to hand, you can also see the data coming in is being represented on port B. Right, here's a look at node 2, or the second node. And if you've been looking at Microelectronica's software, the default value for the second node is 3. You can see I'm on the extended frame trigger. So we've still got data length code of 1, and you can see that's counting hexadecimal from 0 to 255. That's actually counting down at the moment, or backwards. So we have a 16-bit microcontroller, DSPIC33, talking to an 8-bit microcontroller via Microelectronica's CAN SPI click. Simple. This is node 1 using Micro C Pro for DSPIC. So you can see CAN network demonstration with Micro E's CAN 1 module. I'm not going to run through the whole code, I'll just skip down to the while 1. I've obviously implemented the TFT. So while 1, so message received equals ecan 2 read and RxID bit, RX data, RX data length and CAN receive flags. If the received ID equals the ID second, which is number three, and message received, port B equals the value of the data received. And this is what I've modified. So if the RX TX data received buffer naught is equal to naught, that synchronizes my TFT, so I clear the screen with Fuchsia. One millisecond delay, and X is 5 and Y is 8. That's the start position for the text. As the text increments, X equals X plus 25 every time the data comes in. If we've got a full line of text, 
I'm resetting the X position to 5 and incrementing the line position by 10. Then into string RxTx data buffer naught converted to a string, so message received string, TFT write text, message received string, X and Y. 10 millisecond delay, then ecan to write ID first, in this case it's 400, RxTx data, one byte, cans and flags, and that's all this first node is doing. So we are reading the data, putting it on the screen, and then sending it back. The second node is incrementing it. Well, so this is now Micro Electronica's Micro C Pro for PIC, and the CAN SPI click second node demonstration. So you can see that's the microcontroller I'm using, and I'm implementing the Microbus CAN SPI clickboard. And so what this second node is doing, so in the while one, so message received, can SPI read, etc, etc. Turn on some LEDs, if I had some LEDs on the second board. So look, every time a message comes in, counter equals counter plus one, so counter plus plus. If the counter one is less than 511, RX data coming in is just incremented. Else, the data is decreased or decremented. If the counter 1 is greater than 2040, counter 1 equals naught. I'm just zeroing the counter, so when it's finished decrementing the number, counter zeroed and it will start counting up again. 10 millisecond delay, and you can see, can SPI write, second identification, or second node identification, RTX data, one byte, cans and flags. So in answer to Saeed's question, yes, we've got one byte of data being transferred from this node 1 to the second node 10 meters away. One byte of data, so 0 to FF or 0 to 255, but we've got thousands of bits of data being transmitted every minute. And it's up to you to store the data, increment them and do what you want with them. Whilst I've been talking, we've had over 300,000 frames transmitted. So, hopefully you found this helpful. Thank you for watching.